Okay, today we are making more or less apple turnovers. I make mine like pinwheel style. So I've already cleaned the countertops, turned on the oven, defrosted the puff pastry treats, and no, I did not, I did not. <laughs> make my own puff pastry sheets by scratch. That is just, it's just too hard. So I did not do that. One thing I'm happy about is here in Thailand, puff pastry sheets are no longer ridiculously priced, overpriced. They used to be so expensive here. It used to be pretty darn pricey. I think I'm still going to use the toothpicks. But this is the worst toothpick dispenser in the world. It looks better than it actually works. <laughs> So I made the apple, apple filling yesterday and I went ahead and made it from scratch and let me tell you it wasn't because I was excited to make it from scratch. I made it from scratch because you can't get apple pie filling here in Thailand. Most ridiculous thing but you can't get it. I can get blueberry, strawberry, cherry, all these other flavors but I somehow cannot get apple pie filling here in Thailand. So I turned one of the corners over and then I wet a little mix here. It's kind of hard. Put that over. Take one another end. Uh, this thing is uh, coming together already. I'm not sure what that's all about. That's over. in there and the one thing I learned through this whole process is it's much better to move these pinwheels immediately after you had cut it already so that way you're not damaging the shape it's weird how this stuff works just find out new little tricks and new little things that happen things that used to not be as difficult and I'll be honest I got the uh, air con on today but um, the humidity issue here has definitely is different when you're cooking with all this humidity. But I took the humidity out of the air today with the air con. Um, with the type of air conditioning unit I have here. Now, the apple pie filling I made from scratch, I definitely don't make it as sweet because I put a drizzle on here afterwards. And because of the drizzle that's already sweet, and the fact that I do want the distinction and the taste on that, I don't make my apple, apple filling bitter or anything like that, or it's just not even semi-sweet, it's just, just almost sweet. And that way there's a difference between the, um, the uh, apple filling and the drizzle that I'll put on later. And the reason I'm making these today is my good friend from the UK who owns a bar here, a little pub in town, his lead cashier saw him eating these uh, apple turnovers last week. And she goes, how come you didn't make me apple turnovers for my birthday? And so, I, um, there's not a lot of, a lot of people here in my hometown that are doing a lot of cooking. So... People always want some of my stuff. Okay. 
And then I know I've gotten some complaints in the past where people have said I have not put the recipe online. It's not a secret, let me tell you. I just, um, as you can tell from my videos, I don't really edit or anything. I'm way too busy. I got a full-time job as it is here. I'm not here for shits and giggles for sure. And between my full-time job, taking care of the girlfriend, meeting up with my friends, I don't have all day and night to be editing the video, so I apologize. But um, initially I started doing this because every time I was out of the country, people were like, hey, give us an update on what's going on. You just disappeared from the face of the earth. You know, because I'm pretty social. I go out a lot and hang out with people and do stuff for people. And they're like, hey, when you go out of town, you just disappear off the face of the earth. So I started doing the YouTube videos from specifically my aunt and a few other people just so they can get an idea of what's going on, what I'm doing, where, what part of the world I'm at, what are my activities. And one thing great about YouTube is just post that online and then I don't have to individually talk to everybody. I, you know, working full time and stuff, I don't time to be taking individual phone calls so doesn't look like a lot in there, but that's going to be a lot of turnovers that I'm going to make. <laughs> and the reason I'm making it today is it changing the transformer on Tuesday, so the power is going to be out all day Tuesday, or not all day Tuesday, it's going to be out from 10 a.m. to 1, hopefully, it'll kick back on after that. They're usually pretty good when it comes to transformer update to get that done. And so what I'll do is, I'll have the guys over after 1 to be on the safe side, I told them to come over at 3 o'clock, and uh, I think the first day that they come back on the transformer side, we're doing a, um, I think we're ordering Texas chicken. I don't know if any of you guys know what that is. I didn't even know what Texas chicken was until it came here. We definitely don't have them back home in Seattle. And so they opened up a Texas chicken right around the corner from our building. And so then I ordered it and uh, Thankfully, my girlfriend, who's Thai, actually likes Texas chicken because there's a lot of long food that she does not like. This is still preheated, so we'll get the next batch started here. Love you, babe. So, wipe that off. I like to sprinkle a little bit of cornstarch over here. I've been trying to finish the remodel of this condo. The lady who's in charge of this building, the condo manager, is good friends with the lady who built this building and uh, have issues with the daughter to try to get, with the daughter trying to get the condo bought next door. They kind of want a ridiculous price. As ridiculous as this sounds, I offered, <laughs> They know I want it bad, and I can 
semi care less. So I offered 50% more than what the condo was worth next door. It's a small unit, 50 square meters. But I wanted that has a separate room. So I wanted to add an extra bathroom and a kind of a guy's den. And um, she has not accepted and wants even more money. I don't think she wants a little, she only wants a tad more. You know, it's funny because she gifted the unit to her daughter, but she really controls the negotiations. And I'm just kind of tired of them backtracking after we've had our agreement. I actually sent the deposit over initially when I offered what I offered for this unit, for the next door unit. They accepted, they took the deposit, signed the paperwork, and then they backed out. Now, I thought here, you can agree to buy a unit for the buyer, but the seller usually doesn't sign a form. So they backed out and put me in a kind of a predicament because I made some changes to this condo because of that. And I held off getting my custom bedroom done, the rock, rock wall, and a few other things, and then backed out. Then I went ahead and went from overpaying to basically agreeing to pay quite a bit more. And then um, they want even more than that. So right now, the amount that I offer to pay is more, slightly more than double what this unit is worth. And I know some people in the States are like, wow, that's ridiculous. Well. In the overall scheme of things, I want the unit next door, got the funds, just pay for it, be done with it. But now they're just beyond greedy and holding me up and I'm a little bit more about principle. So the fact that they kind of messed me over once before and now they're just wasting my time, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and just back out of it all together and just not deal with them anymore and just even if they come back to me, I, I don't think I'm going to bother to um, um, buy the unit. So, that's kind of where we're at right now. Oh, light went off. Let's go ahead and put this in here. Hi, Bixie. Set the timer for 14 minutes, please. Starting the timer for 14 minutes. So I'll set the timer for a little bit shorter period of time. We're gonna go ahead and check out to see how it looks in 14 minutes. It's probably gonna be anywhere from about a minute to three minutes longer. We'll see how that goes. I'm gonna use a little more applesauce here or apple pie filling. Just because I have so much and I actually, to tell you the truth, I don't wanna make 5,000 apple pin tin turnovers. So last night at uh, about 11 p.m., I ran out to the 24-hour grocery store. And with the humidity, it was, it said that with the humidity levels, it was still feeling like it was 104 out here at 11 o'clock at night. It, I went to the store and I was like, man, no sun, 11 o'clock at night, it should be a lot cooler feeling, and it was uncomfortable. And so, I typically don't like to drive at night on the moped, and then I also don't like to drive with no shirt on because it's kind of a, kind of a semi-no-no here in Thailand to not have a shirt on. But they kind of look the other way, kind of like Japan, they kind of look the other way when foreigners, belongs, 
don't really follow by kind of custom norms. It's kind of like, I don't know if you guys know this, but in Japan, it's not, it's not kosher. It's not okay to be drinking a beverage and walking down the street. Like we would drink our Starbucks down while we're walking or eat our breakfast, drink our coffee, whatever. In Japan, you're supposed to stand there if you're just outside of a vending machine, go drink your drink and then drink it and then put it in the recycle bin and then get on your merry way. This walking and drinking your coffee is considered kind of impolite. But they kind of look the other way with foreigners and just say, hey, they're foreigners. We'll just put up with it. So I'll post this video later and then when I get a chance, I'll go ahead and put the recipe on there. Everybody has their own apple pie filling recipe. So I'll, you know, I don't really, I don't really measure mine because apples, you know, I, here I had to use, I'm not a big fan of the quality of apple pie or Granny Smith apples here. I mean, they're just not as good as back home in Washington. And so I bought two of them. I wasn't super thrilled. I was okay with the quality of the the kind of the gala apples that they sell here. But I used like probably two Granny Smith and three Granny. Uh, I used uh, three Granny Smith. I'm sorry. I used three um, gala apples for every two Granny Smith apples. And then, I, you know, of course, I used the cinnamon and I used sugar. Now, if this was back home, I would have used um, Splenda. But, you know, there's a lot of people out here who don't care about Splenda. And especially because this is a Thai girl. She has no problems eating a bunch of sugar. So, I use sugar to make this filling. So, sugar, cinnamon. I did not have to add any... Just thick it, thicken it up, and then let that cook for about 40 minutes. Mashed it up a little bit, and then put it in the refrigerator for today. A lot of times back home, I'm a little lazy, and uh, I'll just use the canned apple filling. Here's a second tray. So that has about two minutes, 30 seconds left to go. I'll go ahead and see how many more. I guess I'll make a bunch today. I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot of anything today. Today's Sunday here, and I don't like to go out on Sunday because it's like family day. It's like the Philippines too. Today is like family day, so traffic is horrendous. The malls are packed, so I'll probably just stay indoors as much as possible except for to deliver these. And then, for whatever reason, almonds are really expensive here, sliced almonds. So I was cheap and I went ahead and I bought the raw almonds sliced and I toasted them in the oven myself to save a little bit of money. camera around you guys seen me already make these so 
Let me show you what we got going on here. Now, most people here in Thailand don't have ovens. And so I went ahead and uh, had to get this oven imported from Germany. And then I didn't realize that, um, I didn't realize that I had to pay an import tax. So this oven was, they charged me almost twice, like, not twice as much, let's be, let's not exaggerate. I had to pay like 50% more than what this normally costs overseas. And then, what do you need, babe? Soap? This one? Yep. And then, I went ahead and um, I had to pay the import tax. And so, this oven costs quite a bit to get it shipped over to me. So, right now, you can see what they look like inside here. So, that's how they look right now. Let me open up the door and see that's how they look. They are going to need a quite a few more minutes, actually, to tell you the truth. So, let's get a few more pinwheels done. Filling, so I don't have to make as many. <laughs> that, that, that. that there. Three. Now, the rest of these pot fillings. So I bought the pre made, oh crap. I made the pre, pre made puff pastry sheets. Now, normally back home, if I'm not making mine from scratch, I am still. I am still um, using the um, Pepperidge Farm pup pastry sheets. Oh, these are frozen, man. I can't even cut them. So let's stick those out. So I can see that they're turning brown a little bit on the tops. Looking pretty good. They say it's going to be ready in two minutes, which I think they're going to need a total of four minutes longer. One, two, three, three, four, five, six. Huh. 
These are the pinwheels. Using puff pastry treats. Back in the States, you can use the um, Pepperidge Farm frozen puff pastry treats. They come in the rectangle sheets, right? And I cut them into thirds. So then they end up being squares. And I like to use kind of the smaller sheets because they're already pretty big as it is. And I don't need a giant size turnover. And I'm not folding it over. Then I'll defrost them, cut the slits four ways, take one corner of each after I put up a dollop of um, apple pie filling. If I'm in a hurry, I'll go ahead and just buy the canned apple filling. Now with the canned apple filling, sometimes you need to add a tiny bit more cinnamon. It really does it, it's usually pretty sweet as it is. so. I don't add any sugar or Splenda extra to a canned apple apple pie filling. I'll go ahead and add just a touch more cinnamon and maybe even um, a little bit of water if it's a little thick. And usually the pieces inside them are a little bit too too many slices more for like an apple pie. Then I'll go ahead and uh, kind of chop it up a bit to get them more into little cubes, little pieces. Then uh, I wet my fingers, put a little bit of cornstarch water in there to keep it together. And then um, after that, yeah, it's gonna need a few couple more minutes. And then after that, put the toothpick on there and put it in the oven. Now I bake these at 400 degrees, which is about 205 Celsius. Um, they take about 17 minutes, but I set the timer for 13. I don't know why, but I always put it in there for about 14 minutes, which is th still three minutes shorter than what the recommendation is. And, but then I've also seen these take the three, four, five minutes longer, so more like 20 minutes. So somewhere between the 15 and 20 minute mark. And I think it all depends on how cold the puff pastry sheets are. Um, the trays are still were cold when I pull them out. And then, you know, I have the air con on here, pretty cranked up right now. So, these are getting already thawed out pretty good, actually. Yeah, these are getting pretty pliable already. So, not too shabby. Probably because, although I have the air con on, it's blowing a little bit over here. Then I'll let them cool. And then once they're done cooling, I'll take uh, powdered sugar, which I have here. I have a are already open here somewhere. Oh, here. So I got a little bit left over from the last time. We'll use that up first. Mix that with a little bit of milk. And then I'll use about a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Mix it up a little bit so it becomes where I can pour it, drizzle it. And then I'll add immediately after I drizzle, I'll add either chopped walnuts or sliced almonds immediately onto the drizzle so it sticks. And then, by the way, um, if you have uh, blanched or raw al almond slices, uh, I usually bake them in the oven on parchment paper for about, um, I set the um, temperature at about 177 or 350 Fahrenheit, and I'll bake them on parchment paper, baking sheet paper, and I'll kind of toss them a couple times or turn them over a couple times with a spatula, with a, uh, with a uh, special thing and um, I'll go ahead and um, wait until they get toasted but not burn on top and I'll do that um, for about um, kind of varies but I'll check on them in about 10-15 minutes and then I try not to overcook um, the uh, almonds Pretty 
good. I think they need two more minutes. So it's probably closer to 20 minutes that I needed to cook them here. Take a look, guys. Looking pretty good, actually. I think they're about ready. Go about a little less than a minute longer here, and we'll be good to go. Now the the um, the tips on the edges on the outside of the pinwheels they turn to tend to cook a little bit quicker than right in the center because I put in the applesauce plus it just folded over a bunch of times but um, yeah they look pretty darn good. So I'll go ahead and take them out. How they look here. Looking pretty good, huh? Put this next tray in there. And yes, I went ahead and set the timer already. So they're all done. So there they are. The apple pinwheels. You know, with puff pastry, because it's made with butter, these things just slide right off, really. There's times where I've pulled this thing out and it's just... slide right off the, the pan. So there you go. Puff pastry sheets. Pretty good. Pinwheels. And so there they are. I'm going to let you guys go, and I'll do a part two when I'm ready to drizzle and put the nuts on top and I do make a few without nuts just because you know there are some people that I come across that don't eat nuts or are allergic to it so I was making you know a few 10 20 percent of the ones I make without the nuts just in case I come across somebody who doesn't so I'll see you guys later in part two for when I finish it off thanks guys <laughs>